guys, look who I'm here with. I'm with Lorella from Not A Farm Girl. Did I Hello. say that right? Yeah. Lorella? I don't know why I second guessed myself. <laughs> I'm here with Lorella from Not A Farm Girl. She's out here visiting from Missouri, originally from California. Right. But threw up a message on the message board, said I'm out in California in Orange County, no less. And I said, well, I will certainly drive up to meet with you. I know right where I want to take you. We're going to go to Sherman Gardens and Library. And that's where we are today. And we're here to take you guys along for the ride. So. It's so beautiful and cool and sunny and reminds me why people want to live in California. But I'm excited to get back to my critters. But for today, I'm just going to enjoy being here. Definitely. Yeah, you can really smell the jasmine. It smells so good. All right, let's get into it. Oh, Jess would be so happy. It's variegated citrus. <laughs> Ooh, pink lemonade lemon. And they've planted all of these edibles. They've planted all of these edibles right here as ornamentals. That's really cool. Yeah, I'd really like to have just like a little one. I mean, they're just so beautiful. enjoying ourselves here at the Sherman Library and Gardens in Newport Beach. I think it's actually technically Corona Del Mar. I'll link everything down below if you guys are ever in the area and you want to check it out. It's a beautiful, beautiful place. Worth your time. Definitely. Well, I'm really excited to connect with you and you're out here from Missouri, originally yes. from California. Right. Um, you're more of the animal expert. You like more of the animal stuff. Tell us a little bit about that. Uh, I, first of all, I want to say I'm definitely not an expert. <laughs> oh, okay, um, sorry. <laughs> I will say I'm better with animal husbandry than I am with gardening, and I enjoy the animals a lot, and I'm learning a lot. So tell us a little bit more about, like, what was it like for you to move to the farm? Moving from Los Angeles to rural Missouri was a complete gamble for us. It was a, it was a risk. Not so much of like, you know, we're not gonna have a place to live or anything like that because my parents were there. So we had we had a fallback. We could always move in with mom and dad if we needed to. <laughs> so it wasn't like that. The risk was, were we really gonna like this life adventure? Because we were both career oriented. Uh, Twenty, My husband was 20 plus years in the television industry. Wow. And then I'm a sign language interpreter. And so we just said, we're done. Midlife crisis happened for both of us together, which is good. And we said, we're leaving the city, we're moving to the farm, this is it. Turns out I absolutely love working with animals. It feels like this is what I was made for. We have two bred heifers, so they're cows that are pregnant for the first time. And I learned they should this. be calving <laughs> in the fall, late fall. We have a pair of duck, and they're Mr. and Mrs. Quackers. And they wait for me to come home at night and say, okay, Mr. and Mrs. Quackers, time for bed. And then they will like go off into their house. Do they really yeah, are so they precious? Do. It's, they're sweet. They're, and they're fun to watch. And they chase the puppy around. We have 20 laying hens and 14 new chicks. Added silkies, uh, Easter eggers, silver lace Wyandotte or Wyandotes. I'm not sure how to pronounce it because they're pretty. We produce eggs and sell them. And I have just got rabbits. My first two rabbits got from Elizabeth Branscombe of Branscombe Farms. And then my last four rabbits came from Kevin and Sarah at Living Traditions Homestead. And so now we're ready to start our rabbitry. I have a deal with my husband. I do the raising and caring of the animals and he does the dispatching. Because uh, I, I think that part would be hard. We get grower pigs or feeder pigs, what they call us. So we don't breed them ourselves, but we buy piglets, raise them to butcher age, and then take them to the butcher. And seeing them come home as meat and in my freezer is fine. I get a lot of questions about that. How can you eat your own meat? Because mm -hmm. they are a product of our farm and they have a job to do and we make sure they live happy little lives and then they have one bad day. Mm -hmm. One bad day and we try to make that bad day as comfortable and quick as possible. And 
why wouldn't I eat my own meat? Because I know how it's been raised and it's been raised on pasture. It's been raised with non-GMO feed. It's been well cared for. That was a very beautiful synopsis. One thing I was wondering as you were talking was, what would you say has been the hardest part about farming and learning to farm, even though you're not a farm girl? Right. <laughs> not making as much progress as I had hoped. We are also building our own home. Oh, wow. And so, Whenever we have that little bit of extra money, because we're debt free right now and we intend to stay that way, we are we going to drywall a room? Or are we going to buy a new animal? Are we going to get some fence? Um, so our progress has been slower than we had hoped. Uh, so that has been difficult. And then when there are tragic things that you can't control, mm -hmm. that's difficult. But it is a part of homesteading and it's a part that people need to know about and be prepared for. I, I used to call them successes and failures. Now I call them successes and learning opportunities. Yep. Because everything that we do, hopefully we learn from and we move from there. That's, that's really neat. Thank you for sharing that with us. So again, this is Lorella from Not A Farm Girl, even though she's got a lot more farm knowledge than me. So I'll link everything down below. Please be sure to go check her out and show her some YouTube love. Go oh, check out the future. So often I feel like I'm not a very um, proficient gardener. So you're really great with the animal husbandry, but here I'm a little bit more of an expert on the plants it seems. Yes, for sure, <laughs> for sure. <laughs> I'm like, oh, there's maidenhair fern, there's hydrangea, there's fuchsia, there's all these things. And, and you're like, like, oh. Oh, it's an artichoke flower. <laughs> no, it's an artichoke. The artichoke is the flower. Oh smells so good you guys. These are absolutely stunning and they smell so wonderful. Please, I think it's is it Japanese maple? It might be. Yeah. I saw a bunch of these. Yeah, I love it when they use like vegetables as ornamentals. That is really cool. I mean where else are you gonna see kale with dahlia? That is really neat. And I believe this is yarrow which is just the most beautiful goldenrod color. It's just absolutely stunning. So after seeing all these dahlias in person, I've decided I definitely need to start growing dahlias because dahlias contain all my favorite colors, which is basically the rainbow, but these fuchsia, orange, goldenrod, yellow colors are absolutely stunning. Check it out. Within one flower, you've got all my favorite colors, from fuchsia to goldenrod yellow. These are absolutely stunning. I'm also drawing some enchanted inspiration from these little flower beds that they have placed around the perimeter of different parts of the property. Is there anything more enchanting than dahlias? And I think that's phlox back there. Anything that grows just straight up with beautiful bell flowers on it. Oh, so captivating. And I think I see some snapdragons, which are so fun as well. And it seems about just everywhere we go, they've planted edibles among ornamentals, or they're using edibles to be an ornamental, which is really, really neat. And not something that I feel like I'm going to do quite yet, but it's really beautiful and interesting to the eye. Carpenter bee? Something. Oh, it's checking you out. Well, thank you so much for hanging out with us today, you guys. We'll see you guys in the next one.